Okay, uh, I have never played Idle Wizard before. I don't know anything about it other than that it's an idle game. Um, this is my first time playing this on stream, so I'm playing this at the same time as like four other idle games. So if you're watching this on the future, in the future on YouTube, there should be a link in the description if you want to watch me play all those idle games at once as part of the marathon. Um, but also if you just watch that timer in the corner, you can see how much time jumps in between sessions. Um, earn mana to buy your first mana source. Learn mana passively. Okay, it's pretty standard stuff. Earn mana to buy your first upgrade. Got it. No, this is still the soundtrack. Is this like a hundred for the first upgrade? 500, okay, I guess they want me to buy a bunch more of these to passively earn it. Can I click on this bat or do something with that? Oh, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Grimoire. Oh, it makes more sense to try to save up for the upgrade first, or go for the grimoire first. I usually like getting upgrades before buildings. I'll get one. I do like kind of the interface for this one. It reminds me of like uh, Eye of the Beholder, old school dungeon delvers. Five hundred five k, eight point two five k. Wonder what occasionally causes me to get oh, my knowledge. Does he levels up separately? Interesting. Okay. Okay, got it. You mean the next breakpoint where an upgrade unlocks? Idle mode increases the efficiency of your mana production. Clicking the aura resets the timer and breaks idle mode. To activate it, refrain from clicks for one minute. Oh, okay. So you kind of encouraged to not actively click in this one? It's kind of cool. S summarizing the percentage that's contributing here. Oh, I'm not gonna worry about that for now. It seems complicated. Not gonna get up to 5k very quickly, so I guess we'll start trying to get these grimoires. Oh wait, are these just native multipliers that don't require an upgrade purchase? That's different than I'm used to. I'm used to getting to certain thresholds and then um, that having an upgrade that I have to pay for. We're playing five idle games simultaneously, so I'm just playing them until I kind of run out of things to do actively and then switching to another one. Void Empty, gain Void Mana, increases passive mana production and its amount. Oh, that went by really fast. Expedition keys drop by 20%. Okay. So this is like a thing that while I have it, it passively increases other mana production. What causes it to drain? That's what I didn't see before it went away there. Increases production by 50% when you're in idle mode. Okay, that's nice. It's just general mana per second. Okay. Grants a first spell scroll, allowing to choose and cast spells. Character critical profit. That's cool. And the character just kind of levels up passively regardless of what I'm doing. Invest catalysts. 
Okay, the game hasn't tutorialized this yet. Waiting to get to 5k here. Void mana is just like almost like a golden cookie and cookie clicker. It's a thing that pops up occasionally that I can actively click. Choose a spell for this spell slot. Spells can be cast when there are charges available and charge over time and with orb clicks. Oh, that's interesting. Magic missile. Earn a minute of production. Gem Resonance. Amount of Mana Gems. So Mana Gems are different than... That's this, right? Okay. That seems pretty nice once you're able to do it. But I need to build up charges to be able to cast it, which I also get from clicking this thing. Yeah, that's cool. Spell Fountain. Next thing is 8.25k. I don't know what character critical profit is just yet. 25 is our next goal. Here to choose a pet. All pets have some requirements you have to complete to unlock them. Oh, wow. Choose pet. Holy crap. Wow, this is pretty deep. Uh, I guess I'll just pick one. Pixie. Character level three. Click profit goes up. I'll click one time per second for every 20 pet levels. Okay, that's cute. So trying to get this up to 25 for the next threshold. Idle bonus. I probably want to pick up that idle bonus before switching off this game, but we'll see. I like the relationship between spell casting and active play. That makes sense to me. So these just gain levels based on incoming mana gain, or are they just gaining levels idly regardless of how active I'm playing? It will explain character critical profit. Save up to pick that up. Critical profit. The amount of bonus mana critical clicks earn. Oh. So crit, crit damage versus crit chance. Okay, that makes sense. That's cool. 12.5k. That still isn't ready to cast, right? Now it is. Oh, nice. That's pretty crazy. It's insanely crazy, actually. I guess I don't really need to click crazy during that. Double clicks. That was basically free. I wonder why I didn't see that until later. Is that like based on getting an achievement or a trophy or something? Where do I do pet clicks? Oh, you mean like passive clicks generating from pets don't get in the way? I see what you're saying. review what I've activated here since I clicked them pretty fast. Increase mana gems profit by 100%. Grimoire's profit. Character critical profit. Okay. Is that just unique to Pixie? Other 
pets have different rules for leveling up, basically. Crit chance up, that's cool. I haven't seen crit chance in a game like this before. I like it. 25 is next for that long, so I'm gonna get to 10 on this guy. I wanna try to get my spell cast again here, so I'm gonna work to build that back up. Since we're just starting this one, I might stay on this game for a little bit longer than the other games, just to make sure we get to a point where leaving it idle for you know, 40 minutes or so is going to be productive. It seems right now I can still do a lot of stuff through active play. So is actively clicking the gem only giving me a chance to occasionally get more shards for the spell cast? The next level is 50. I'll try to have that for when I do the upgrade. Or when I cast the spell, I mean. Okay, cool. Shiny unlocked. Yeah, but it doesn't look like it's filling up every single time I click there, right? Other things are doing it. Oh, I should have taken Mana Jade. There we go. Grimoire. Offline bonuses. Pick up an Alchemy Desk. Okay, so it's not one-to-one. -one. Every click gives you a chance to get one, I see. more profit, idle bonus, offline bonus, which isn't going to apply here, so I'll probably get that last. Head experience increase sounds great. 75 is next. Okay, I don't have to go all the way to 100. Spell is going to be my main source of progression here, so I'm going to ignore the idle bonus for now. So basically the portrait's going to change as the pixie gets higher level, but typically each individual level doesn't do anything unless if this says, so this is every 20 levels things get better, right? Probably take the double grimoire. Most of my profit right now is coming from the enchanted tree. Is there a way I can like buy more than, see the cost of more than one at a time? Because I want to see what it would cost to buy 10 of these, for example. I'm trying to get it up to 75 before I cast a spell. That might not be possible, actually. Journal, character, paragon level one, interesting. So we want to have that at the same time as this buff. I'm going to try to get it really quick before it fully decays. How long does the little purple void mana thing stay on the screen before it naturally despawns if you fail to click it? Spell shard generation from clicks sounds great. That's what I've been working on right now. I'll get more alchemy desks. Didn't end up making it up to 75, sadly. Now, does that spell shard generation thing only apply to my own clicks, or does it apply to the pet clicks as well? One more mana gem. I'm 
I guess this kind of reminds me of the the faction coin system from Realm Grinder, which also gives you kind of a, a reward that's easier to get by actively clicking. I really like how this genre has evolved over time. Smart. Now I get that benefit. I just got the one that was making the spell shard bar feel faster, which is the one I'm interested in. Click profit by four. Is that based on just volume of clicks that that became available as an upgrade? I'm used to these appearing based on certain achievements. I might pop back over to idle loops there in a second and see if I've hit 100% exploration yet. But uh, let me manually cast this one more time and then we'll pop over there. That's the one where I'm most likely to actually waste time if I'm not babying it based on my experience last episode. So I need to baby it a little bit. So I can't, it looks like sometimes it's possible to like build multiple spell casts, like to have a second set of shards in there. I guess I could try letting the idle meter fill, then activate this. I was gonna try to wait until the, the void mana thing spawned. But I suppose every second that I wait without activating it, I'm wasting time that I could be generating more shards to get another spell cast. So that's tricky. I'll at least let this thing fill, I guess. 50% boost would be nice. Okay. She'll aid me. Idle bonus. Turn that on since I'm about to swap off here. Really want that passive spell shards generation. Okay. I think that'll do for now. I'm gonna let this thing run for a bit here. Um, I don't think there's any other obvious. I guess I can buy these out until they become expensive. We're gonna pop back over to idle loops. Idle wizard time. This has been running for a minute. Okay, that's my first time I've seen one of those. So this is a confusing menu. Is this going to get explained later on? Look at what else I got here. Increased pet experience gain. Mana gem profit. Oh, I'm using that one spell. Crit chance. Like spell shards generation. Second spell scroll sounds great, actually. Mana gems. These can I buy? Cast that. I have to put a different spell on here or not necessarily? Spawn rate of void entities and they remain longer. Grants 36 spell shards. Auto clicks five times per second, but for 45 seconds, okay. Let's try. While I'm playing actively, let's do the spell shards, I guess. Offline bonus, void entities, character crit chance. Not idling right now, so don't worry about that too much. 50 for grimoires is the next big upgrade.
Oh, it's really active. I didn't realize it was that active. I thought it was going to take a while to grant it. It's crazy. Augment desk. I want to get a circle of power if possible. Oh, that's cool. While the spell is active, you can be getting spell shards for the next cast. I don't know. This is a... When I see void entities on void traps, that's golden cookies, right? Oh, okay. Makes sense. I want to try to pick up one circle of power if possible. To get this up to a hundred, though, for the extra tier. Yeah, that's cool. So it's not just transferring shards from one spell to another. I do actually get, I finally got something that makes my click chance based on my production. So it does make sense to click more during that buff, I think. Get up to a hundred and I'll work on something else here. I'm not clicking for uh, gems or for mana. I'm clicking for shards. <laughs> I assume at some point clicking becomes more valuable again as it scales based on... my existing production. That's what I'm used to with these games. Try to get the 100 gems before I proc that. How much does that cost? 36. I don't like sitting here with this spell available, though. I'm just going to proc it. There we go. Polished. Me desks. It's hard to tell what I got. Hang on. This mana Amethyst is probably at 850 million. This thing no. Are these different classes or something I was been waiting for the game to tutorialize stuff for me but if there's something that it's never going to tutorialize I guess let me know Try to time this so that I have the idle boost when I turn on the mana gem spell. Imagine this doesn't scale as well later on. It was really good at the beginning when I had very very few buildings. Hundred million pet experience. The game was actually pretty aggressively tutorializing at the very beginning. If it stops doing that at some point, I guess let me know. If it wants me to explore clicking the wizard avatar, for example, I can do that. The game's not going to help me out with it. I'm going to try to wait for a golden cookie, some void spirit or whatever. I 
hate waiting. I'm just going to do it. Pet experience, spell fountains, profits. Twenty five alchemy desks would be nice. Head up to seventy five at some point. Hope I get an auto cast eventually for this. Doesn't earn spell shards on itself. Five hundred and thirty five million for fertilizers. Now there's one. Yeah, it's a little bit too late. Thought about letting it sit to try to build this up. Yeah, this thing goes way slower if I'm not spam clicking it. What's the change in my base production? It goes down by like a million. It's hard for me to eyeball the math as to whether the extra shard progress is worth the lost progress here. Definitely more. Profits by 15%, and now it's at 9 million whenever I turn on that spell. So maybe I spam click it after casting the spell until it's like 50% full, and then I let it go into idle mode after that. Five hundred and thirty five million for that. All right, now I'll try to let it build. About how often do the, the void spirits appear by default without any upgrades? It seems like it's every few minutes or so. Want to save. Try to get this up to 50. I wish these had the same icon, the achievement, and like the upgraded unlocked. I guess eventually I'll have them all unlocked and know what they do directly. Shift or control click. Shift is 25, control is max maybe? Thanks. Okay, 19.5 million if I do that while I'm in idle mode, so that's nice. That button, okay, thanks. Am I eventually gonna get an ability that lets me auto cast a spell in a spell slot? Okay, cool. Is that like pretty far down the line or something I might get reasonably soon? So waiting her to get to 20 is a significant level up for her, right? Right, that'll probably be when I swap off then. Gain, character crit profit, alchemy desks. I really want the mana amethyst. That'll make my spell way better. Oh, I like ones that are per achievement point. That's cool. Okay, 
Yeah, but up to 25. So in addition to getting an automatic upgrade for getting to like the 25, 50, 75 thresholds, doing so also gives you a buyable unlock. Exile as prestige. Yeah, just the thresholds give you something automatic. You don't have to buy something, but they give you an upgrade also that's not necessarily related. Seventeen. Oh, that seems fun. Greater elemental. I guess I'll try that when it becomes available. Sets are just for saving certain groups of spells that you've gotten before. Okay. Trying to get that circle of power here. I think I can. Not worth a lot on its own, unfortunately. All the other upgrades are too expensive for right now, so I guess I'll just keep working on trying to build some of these up here. That's yeah, pretty good so far. I'm enjoying it. I'm going to stay on this one until a uh, ability to auto-cast spells becomes available. Wizard unlocked. Does every achievement bring with it an associated upgrade, or... I guess they matter because they contribute to the upgrades that... are scaled based on achievement count, right? So I might try that new click spell here in a second after this next cast of this thing. Some of them give upgrades, okay. Not really going for anything specific there on the right. Clicking anyway. Oh wow, that thing is pretty expensive mana-wise to activate it looks like. I assume this game has a bunch of achievements for number of total orb clicks in terms of giving you new permanent unlocks and upgrades from that. Like that one. So smooth. 5k manual orb clicks. But it looks like that one didn't have an associated upgrade. Nice. Can't benefit from an idle boost on this because I have to spam click during it anyway, so. I 
might just have to start upgrading these based on the relative costs if they're down in order of magnitude click on those it's kind of hard for me to eyeball which ones are worth doing right now okay. oh, that's actually kind of weak <laughs> Maybe it gets way better later when you have a whole bunch of other stacking click abilities, but... Maybe it's really good if you stack it with a void. But whenever you swap spells, I assume that undoes any... Uh, existing shard progress you have in that slot. Alright, so save this spell for later, I guess. I'll click out the current duration. I thought about switching to that one since the gems aren't as useful as they were at the very beginning. I don't care for any other ones, I don't think. I guess you keep some of the shards when you change spells, but if you had too many shards, you lose them, I suppose. Minute of production is a little crazy. That actually kind of seems overpowered. When I saw it, I assumed that the charge time for it was going to be forever compared to the Mana Gem one. Just got the tree upgrade. seriously procs like almost constantly available it's ridiculous row 10 ones dimensional rift Had experience, critical profit, alchemy desks profit. Ah, uh, okay. Passive sorcering is the one I'm going to get before I swap here. I see. So the mana gem one is the one. Well, I feel like you even run this on autocast, right? Unlocked. What's that? Time played in idle mode. Okay. I was asking earlier about is the game going to tutorialize character swaps? Is that a thing that I need to. Is it going to pop up and tell me to do it? It seems like it stopped popping up since I left earlier. Okay, thanks. Are these just like the portrait? This is a weird menu. Shaman. Oh, I see. Druid. Does this start over in level? Oh, well, I don't want to do that then. I think I just hold out, right?
Auto cast, nice. Careful auto cast. Now it's going to auto cast this when I click off, right? I see. I have to not press two anymore because that changes what's getting auto cast. It looks like it's kind of annoying. Is there another one of those before I move on? Charges. No. All right. Well, I guess I'll just let that run for a minute. Um, maybe I'll try to pick up a dimensional rifts. Oh, that's just a temporary selection. Okay. Yeah. Circle of power. So does this mean I need to have 25 circles of power and a pet at level 18? Should be doable, right? Or am I misunderstanding something about how that's supposed to work? I'm gonna say pet it any pet 18 20. oh i need to get to 20. okay okay more summoning spells looks on increasing profits through auto clicks but i keep the level i was at previously and then i can't change again until prestiging and i guess i can keep my pixie Oh, these are just portraits, okay. Oh, so that changed my spell from the default one. Shoot. Auto clicks. based on amount of trees of life. Okay, that's interesting. So we want to get lots of trees of life. If we're on the druid, then it becomes a more valuable node otherwise than it otherwise would be. I kind of missed the apprentice ability. That seemed OP. I don't know if anything can like match I guess they still have gem resonance. Nothing else in here really seems to compete. It actually makes me sad. Like, I think they balanced Magic Missile. Like, I feel like if I started over this game and just stayed on Apprentice forever and just had Magic Missile on Autocast, I would outperform a lot of these other spells. Is that comparable? Try casting it once and see. Like a minute of production that I can cast every five seconds, right? With all other modifiers already included. Is that 
multiplicative or additive the 9,000%? I can usually analyze the value of a tooltip in a game like this, but here there's I have so many questions like Is that actually better? I can't tell just from reading it Try casting it once it looks like it takes massively more shards Once I go to druid I can't go back to apprentice right Without restarting the game. Can I even exile yet? No I guess I could just wipe my save Really takes a long time to charge. Okay. Even with spam clicking and. I have to cast it at least once to see. By now, I would have had multiple billions from the other one. I'm gonna let that. That won't make it. So when I can cast it. I think compared to other idle games I've played, maybe idle loops is also like this, but it seems very easy to misplay significantly in this one. You just really waste a lot of time in not being able to foresee the impact of the tooltip, right? I definitely wasted probably a solid 20 minutes on the mana gem spell instead of the uh, one minute of production one. That's there's a thing like that called collect taxes and realm grinder that's comparatively relatively weak. Unless if you I assume there's stuff that's specifically built around it. Let me take this off. Wait for the idle thing to come back up. Does it ever become competitive with like the higher faction spells though, without anything else to multiply on top of it? I assume there's design space that one of the factions cares about collect taxes, but. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that was more than I would have gotten from spam clicking magic missile, but maybe it gets there eventually when you have more trees of life. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's certainly not, like, the most efficient thing to spend on at the beginning of the game. When you don't have all of those crazy stacking buffs. Alright, I'm just gonna put that on auto and I'll move on to another game. Um, what was the order I was doing this in? Wizard Idol. What's going on here? Idle bonus. 
Charges for spells. Click profit. Really care about trees of life in this one. Man, I just... It's hard for me to buy that this is stronger than Magic Missile. So this one actively discourages you from uh, casting or from clicking is interesting too. I haven't encountered that before in an idle game, I don't think. So we have further down here. New cultures. You have X starting mana and get Y per pot if you need 1,500 mana for your active choices. Yeah, but the time to smash the pots is variable based on your stats, isn't it, Terranen? Like, there are things that affect how much mana you spend to earn the... to gain mana from them. Clicking upgrades applies to the pet. Okay. I'm just basing that on your earlier comment that 923 is not a very large number in the context of 4.929 million, unless if it affects the number of shards they generate. Oh, that was the one I was looking for. Okay. Now clicks make more sense now that it's based on my production percentage. I'll go back to idle loops in a second after this to show you what I'm talking about. I guess I can move this to my autocast. Yeah, and the mana cost is reduced by having better stats, right? So, like, the higher your stats, the faster the pot smashing bar fills up every single time. Right. So, do you think... The stats that are trained by smashing pots doesn't affect this, the mana cost of smashing the pots at all? Okay, retro. That's what I was thinking. Thank you. Am I crazy? <laughs> Almost positive this is how this worked. Because the displayed mana to smash is being modified in real time by whatever your stats are and speed and strength and stuff, right? So like if I go back to that screen after I let it run for a few minutes, I'll notice that instead of it ending exactly at the right time at the end of the first investigate, it'll make it a little bit into a second investigate, if that makes sense. Because I will have conserved a tiny amount of mana from gaining a few talent points and speed. Market? Oh god, get me out of that screen. Interior. 
This literally just changes the background for fun, right? It doesn't actually do anything. Probably actually good. Enough that I don't think you can eyeball calculate it is my point. See if there's any new spells to switch to here. 21. Thirty-six is the next interesting spell, I guess. Try the greater elemental. Now that Clicking is less bad, but... Let's try it just to try it. Try to keep doing Trees of Life to make this better. Should have picked up the Void Trap upgrade before doing that. Dimensional Rifts still represent the majority of my benefits here. Just get this now in case we get another avoid thingamabob. So clicking in this game is actively wasting a lot of time until you get the first of the click is based on production upgrades, which I'm trying to remember how early that is in Cookie Clicker. I guess I've never felt discouraged from clicking in Cookie Clicker just because there's no idle meter there. Interesting. Make sure these are all in the same order of magnitude and cost, yeah. Looks like the elemental is even slower to summon. Ten times a second. I assume that each character class has a pet that's synergistic with them. Is the pixie a good one for the druid or should I be switching right now? I wish some of this stuff was more explicitly gated. Like, I wish that on this screen, instead of seeing all of this, I lo loaded into the screen and just saw the druid, right? Because this is intimidating. Oh, you can't, you only get to pick the pet once? Okay. It says choose. Yeah, 
be lovely if I could get another auto spell. I want to get that if possible. That seems nice too, but it's very expensive. I think I want to turn this off auto because I want these both to go at the same time so that the auto clicks are benefiting from the CPS of the... What's this one called? Evergrowing Forest. Doesn't progress for a while yet. So does that decay at the same rate no matter what, like from 100% to 0%, or does it last longer the more initial void mana you get? Makes sense. Well, the stats that reflect actions, the purple part of the stat resets, but the talent part doesn't, right? So, like, your orange talent still affects it. Unless if I misunderstand how talent works. On the case per second percentage of your current void mana. Okay. So it's not like globally going down by 10% per second or something. Oh, really? I thought talent was like a... Like, I thought you like combined the purple level from that loop plus the orange level to get your actual level. I see. So for it to make a difference, you would have to, just making sure I understand, you would have to have such an insanely high talent level that you would get so much XP from the initial, like, I don't know, 20 pot smashes that the following 30 pot smashes would all smash way faster than they would otherwise, and that's unlikely. Like, maybe maybe for very long loops at the end of the loop, what I'm talking about makes more sense, but not so much at the very start. That was a nice combo right now. when I need to click. Whoops, it was a little late on it. I feel like that a lot of these games seem to be like, hey, let's remove the RNG aspect from doing a Eldir in Cookie Clicker. I 
think this one is still better to have auto firing if I'm AFK. Okay, I see what you're saying. But given that I'm switching between multiple games at once, it still stands that I can't quickly do the mental math to know exactly how many pots I need to do my actions. I guess I could pull up a calculator. The time it would take me to do that is probably longer than the time it would take me to brute force it. I see, that makes sense. Achievement bookshelf. Oh, 100 grimoires, right? Trees up there. I believe that these two combined were more effective than Magic Missile. But it's a shame that they get rid of Magic Missile right away, given how effective it is at the start, or apparently effective it was, maybe it wasn't. They have a comparable overall shard cost, okay. I don't think I can do too much else active here without those spells activating, so I'm going to go ahead and tab out of this one.